Hi, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Bogdana. I'm the person who's lobbied everyone, so we don't say bad things about digital. I, I was under the impression when I moved in here, uh, when, when I was invited to speak at here at, the, at the, this event, that people were bringing someone from the digital world because they felt like they needed someone who would be on digital side. Because people were going to come in and say, well, you know, this report says bad things about digital, so let's have someone from digital to see if they can defend the cause. And if you look at the, the way uh, my contribution was described, somebody kind of cheekily said she might disagree with the question. I don't. I actually don't. So I'm actually here to talk about two things. Um, First of all, I'm not here to defend, um, I think I'm not here to be defensive about the role that digital has. I, I was a bit confused by the fact that, that Richard's speech seems to be about digital in general. Who here has read the report, Peter Fields and Les Benes Refault? Just put your hands up. Right, okay, so of the people who have read, who think that the report says that digital is at fault for short-termism? Who's, who, who's read the report and understood that? No one. Actually, if you read the report, and for the people who haven't read it, the context of this, there's a report that has been done by Peter Field and Les Pinet that says, by looking at the IPA effectiveness awards, what we're seeing is more short-term metrics are being used. Actually, I've, num I've counted the times he says short-terms and uses online the same phrase. It's approximately 30 times. But what he says is short-term metrics like online metrics. He, ne he never says, the short metrics that I'm referring to are these metrics. And I think um, what I'm here to argue are two things. One, that I don't think, I don't necessarily agree with Richard when he says that the reason we use them is because it's easier and we're self-interested. I think the reason we use them is because the evolution of the way we measure effectiveness for digital is not there yet. And the second thing that I want to talk about, which I think is a bit more constructive, is that we're not using digital for what it's supposed to be used. If we continue thinking about it in the way we think about it, we're missing out on the biggest thing that was ever invented. <laughs> Effectively, what I'm here to argue is that if you use digital the way it's suggested that we're using it for views and likes and shares and all these things, what you're effectively doing is you've invented fire and you're using it to light a cigarette with it. That's all you're doing. So. Um, when I started thinking about what I wanted to say, I, ha I, you know, I had all these questions around, okay, so what are these evil short-term metrics that we keep talking about? And why are we doing these bad things? And why is short-term bad? What's the problem with it? And how can we do better? And then it occurred to me, again, that the question is not why are we doing a bad thing and are these metrics bad? Actually, the reason these things are happening, I don't think are because people want to be promoted faster and it's easier to use short-term metrics. I think the reality of why we're using these metrics is because we don't have other metrics. So here's what I'd like to talk about. Is first of all, digital is not built and was not built to be brand comms channel. If you think that the internet is here for you to put your advertising on it, you're wrong. We have to understand that the primary role of digital is not to carry brand messages. If we think about digital that way, we're above the line planners. What I find more interesting about digital is that of all the, let's say, comms channels, digital has some features that you can never find in this aggregation on any other channel. It's more immersive more intimate, more direct, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's communal, but at the same time it's more persuasive and credible and closer and tangible. And finally, it's a bit more non-judgmental and unapologetic. So when you think about digital, if your own role for digital is, I want to put my message on there, again, you're not using it the way it's supposed to be used. But let's look at the way kind of digital, because we use this term to mean everything, the World Wide Web, the internet, you know, digital billboards are part of digital. Let's look at the way this thing has evolved. And let's think of the reality of how long we've had to develop metrics. And then let's look at this. This is, let's say, the, the, the ages of the internet. Internet was created as a kind of in the PC era. It was created as an experiment, as a military experiment. And then it moved on into what we call the, the, the internet of information. It was the time when people had the ability to put information in a network and other people would just access that information. And most of you seem a bit younger to remember these things, which kind of worries me. But there were times when 
back in the days, you know, old people, um, when the only reason you had a website was because you wanted to write something about your, your company on it. You know, remember presentation websites, the brochure websites, what we do, who we are, our team. All of those things were kind of standard internet of information type of thing. There was absolutely nothing happening. And then we moved into what we call the Internet of Services. And Internet of Services were things like, it's when the Amazons and the Ebays and kind of the exchanging things starting to happen. So you actually had people doing transactional things. By the way, that was a great age. That was when people realized, holy crap, we can actually do something that can shift economies with this. We're not, we don't just have pages of information we can read. And then, and this is probably the one you're mostly familiar with, it's you know, the Internet of Conversation. The Internet of Conversation is, is probably Web 2.1, not 2.0, because it theoret theoretically, the Internet of Services is 2.0, so that's a bit weird. But the Internet of Conversation is when people started to talk, you know, Facebook, all these things. And then Internet of Things, and then God knows what. We don't know, it's the next stage. Now, here's the thing about effectiveness. When we think about how do we measure digital things, what's the first thing that we think about? And I promise you, most of you will go, if, I hope, because you're, again, you're way younger than I thought you'd be. I hope that you guys are thinking analytics. Now, interestingly enough, Google Analytics is almost the basis for everything that we know when it comes to metrics that we use for digital. Everybody talks about the same terminology, impressions, views, clicks, click-through rate. When was Google Analytics invented? Invented because we had to invent this tool. Google Analytics was invented here. This is not a tool that was developed for the age of conversation. All the metrics we work with are not metrics which are aimed to do this or this. All the metrics you work with are transactional metrics. They are metrics which are aimed to measure in the attribution, what do you call it, in the attribution chain, last click, mostly last click. And by the way, we, we still don't have a very clear attribution modeling system that everybody recognizes. They're meant to measure last click and things that drive to a transaction. So that's the problem, guys. The problem that we have is that the metrics that we use, they're not bad. They're supposed to measure something else. They are supposed to measure transactions, which is different from what we're trying to measure, which is building brands and share. Here's another problem. We are in the age of the social web. How many of you think of themselves as kind of, you know, I kind of want to do social strategy. Who wants to kind of do so? Nobody wants to do so. Oh, good for you. Good. Points for honesty, Alvaro. Points for honesty. So here's the problem with the social web. Again, the social web is not a transactional environment. There's no transactions happening in the social web. They're trying, but there's nothing like that happening. Yet, most of the metrics that we use in the, tr in the social web are still transactional metrics. That's a problem, and we have absolutely no model to account for impact. What we have is something that is called share of voice. Where does share of voice come from? Come on, TV. Share of voice comes from TV. We're using a TV metric to measure the age of conversation. So that's the problem. By the way, news is good. If you want to try to develop a model about how to measure these things without using transactional metrics, you can. Um, actually, the guys at Google will be able to give you a bit more details about this, but in um, Google Poland developed an actual workable model of how to measure YouTube reach and YouTube impact on exactly the same formats that you would use for TV. And why did they do that? Well, because of need. Because they were talking to Unilever and Unilever did not understand transactional metrics because they were not using digital for that. And then, you know, there's stuff like targeting, which is narrow, is bad. <laughs> And everybody's talking about, well, you know, but the web is teaching us to do these things where we have to target narrowly. But remember, the reason we target narrowly is because the web wants to drive people to a transaction. And we are not trying to do well with the communication that we make. And this guy basically, you know, he came out and said, we've reduced advertising, narrow targeting on Facebook, we're going to reach, we're going to do reach. 
But what he also said in a follow-up to this quote, which everybody uses, is we're actually going to do narrow targeting when we want to sell stuff to people, which we will continue to do. So, and then it's probably worth mentioning that, and Richard kind of pointed to that, I think the Cobra effect is probably after this guy. So there's a guy called Goodart, and Goodart actually has a law that, you know, Richard mentioned the Cobra effect, but there is a, an economical law that says <laughs> most of the time when people are given metrics, they turn them into KPIs so that it's easier for them to hit them. So basically, what you're saying is, instead of building brand and measuring that, it's easier for me to get likes, so I'm going to measure likes as KPIs. It happens in economics. If you watch the big short, that's what happened in the big short. So you can measure brand impact. This is a campaign that we did with the help of our friends at Google. All of this campaign was measured at impact on brand level. And we're gonna, we've, we've done it twice already, so we can actually track it from year on year. You can do it, but you have to try. And what you don't have to do is complain that the metrics they're using are not right. They're not right because they were not built to track what you think you're tracking. But then in the last kind of four minutes, what I want to talk about is <laughs> don't use digital the way you use TV. Because if you think that the role of digital is to be a direct transmitter of one message to a shitload of people, you're wrong. That's not what it's there to do. The web, I'm sorry to say, it's bigger and more fragmented at all the TV stations in the world. So if you're trying to get the web to come together so you can have reach for one message, it's fine. Go ahead, try it. But I promise you, you will not be able to do it. So what you think, what you should be thinking about is, going back to this old guy and his incredible quote, which I don't think he thought was going to be this topical. And you know, he said, brands are built like bird's nest with twigs and scraps and little things. That's what the web will do for you. There's two things. One, it will add little bits to a bigger story. What you need to understand is what are the bits that you want to add. That's one thing. And by the way, it works. I mean, these guys, I'm sorry. Who can tell me what the tagline for, for these guys is? Tell me one tagline. Tell me the thing that they stand for. Nobody gets it. Do you get this brand? Do you understand what it stands for? Yes, you do. The, the stories that they tell don't have to all amount to one thing, but you get them. They're good at this. And then the other thing that the web does really well is experience. One thing that we never talk about is something called, I don't even know how to explain this. Perception is built through messaging. Yes, I'm telling you something and you get an impression about me, but it's also built through mostly experience. And here's an example I give. If Nike made shitty shoes, but they had really cool ads with Ronaldo, I promise you, you would not buy the shoes because people are not idiots. And experience with service, with touch points, is more important than brand messaging. That's what the web does. KLM, I love KLM, they're great. They're really great. And the way they understand experience in digital is by doing little things like this one, which I absolutely love. They go, people are on Facebook Messenger a lot. They want to get on a plane. Why don't we just give them the boarding pass in Facebook Messenger? That is an experience, guys. That is not a marketing message. That is an experience, and that's what the web does. So a thing that you probably would have to think about when you talk about um, web is stuff like behavior design. Sorry, guys, there's a lot of guys here. This is a fertility tracker. There's 200,000 fertility trackers. This one's the most successful. Why? Because the experience with the tracker is better than the experience with all the others. By the way, fertility is not different for men, just so you know. Fertility is always the same. There's 200,000 trackers. People love this one because the experience is better. That's what digital does. It does experience and complex storytelling. So then my suggestion is that if we're here, which I'm going to call the edgy experience, we don't have the right metrics. Come on, guys. Let's make some metrics. I don't know which ones they are. What I know is that we have NPS. How many of you actually talk about NPS in any of the work that you do? Do you know what NPS is? Great, good, people, some people. Who, who doesn't know what NPS is? No, seriously, be honest. 
NPS is Net Promoter Score. Net Promoter Score measures people's satisfaction with the experience they have with a service or a product. Let's make that part of the way we measure experience on digital, and we might actually be happier people. And I'm done in time. Thank you very much.